new commoner beforehand, uh, many a time I've been told that it's been like a time warp when people are driving through it. That they always thought that it was beginning to get quite dilapidated and it was quite true because we had quite a number of old buildings and also uh, just it just didn't look nice at all. New Cumberland has suffered over the years from depopulation for one reason or another, lack of jobs, industry moving out and so on. And so what we really have to try and do in developing action plans and so on is to try and hold that depopulation in order to keep the place ticking over us with, with at least the minimum of facilities. New Cumberland was a vibrant place. There were always people walking along the street and people shopping and, and it was busy. It was really busy. Well, we've, we've grown up here in, in a mining community where jobs are plenty, population of 9,000 or so, uh, a thriving community that uh, obviously suffered greatly and as a consequence of that, uh, the town centre suffered greatly with uh, businesses going and uh, even boarded up buildings uh, and I guess uh, a kind of bleak outlook. outlook. I'm very proud of the mining heritage, but to be this taggy, a former mining community, I always believed we were much more than that, and we could be much more than that in the future, certainly. When the community action plan was set up, uh, a lot of people felt that it was the best thing that had, had ever happened in New Cumberland because it actually gave the people a say as to what they wanted to see. And now that has been quite successful over the last five years in that the swimming pool has been kept open, the town hall has been regenerated, some new building being opened across the square, then we've got a new health centre. You go to the other end of the, 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 the castle and you see the development sound about uh, Glenarfin Athletic and the work being done at Moore Park and I can take you back to when uh, the covered enclosure was a an old rusty shed and uh, but what's been done there is fantastic. Uh, means a lot to the town as well when the Glens are doing good uh, the community spirits high and that reveals that things can happen. So. Uh, now uh, I mean that you just need to drive through the place and you can see all the difference. It has made a big big difference with Dumfries uh, House, the improvements that's been made down there and it's gradually, it's pushed out into the surrounding areas. Importantly as well, we got money to fund, uh, to secure the ruin and the ruin of the old church. Uh, the parish of New Cumnock was planted in 1650, so Old Cumnock and New Cumnock uh, uh, were created at the same time. And we were called New Cumnock because we needed to build a new church here. And we're fortunate that the, the, the ruins of that still stand here. Due to the flooding, um, the, I mean, twice we were flooded uh, within two years on the same day, and the village was absolutely devastated when the river Arthur and the Nith uh, overflowed. There was a lot of damage done, and through that, uh, the second one in particular, I decided that I would um, call a meeting and try and set up a resilience group, which we eventually did. And the resilience group is there for to help out in any emergency uh, it occurs within New Cumnock uh, to try and help to alleviate the suffering of the people who are find herself in dire straits through flooding or whatever else might happen. And we created a heritage trail from one end of the castle to the other, to the other end, so you can pick up Burns connections with the old mill here, you can pick up things about the miner's land, you can pick up things about Wallace and Bruce, you can pick up things about Glenarfin Athletic itself, its history. Uh, Kier are mining a uh, restored the land, which I love nice footpaths, uh, cycle tracks, but more importantly as well, it's got this land up that takes us to our covenant and connection. Through the whole the health and social inclusion 
we got funding for to um, help to combat loneliness and social inclusion uh, by putting on a afternoon tea, a tea party really, uh, once a month and it's been fairly successful. We've had four of these so far and the number has grown each time. Now things are starting to come back. The, the swimming pool has been has been refurbished and the town hall has been refurbished and some of the old buildings have been demolished and I think we're at the cusp, I think we're, we're turning the corner and, and the thing we need to do now is to keep that momentum and keep things going. What's the number of empty buildings there are? And one of the things we have to try and do is to stop any further empty buildings happening. There's not many left, but there's one or two. So we've got to try and hold any of these other buildings becoming empty and also have a look at what we can do with the empty buildings that are here and, and what um, we should have in them. Many of the, the, the special instincts that were passed are obviously now in skirts, whether it's up in the afton or over in Cascalic uh, Hill. We want to start making a connection there with some of the other uh, places of interest. Phase three of the Dumfries House Trust has still to be implemented and that will take in on the, the right hand side of the square that we're going to be building. Uh, a wee small uh, mini gym a heritage centre, a community cafe and also an adventure playground for the, the children. We're now looking at ways in the next phase of where we can move this on, what can be done to keep the momentum going and keep the place improved. One of the ways that that can be done and this seriously has to be looked at in the next few years is what we do with the community benefit money from wind farms to make sure that a legacy is left behind in the village and that it's not squandered on various things.